Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. Today we're gonna to be working on a mixed media scrapbook home decor project. I've had lots of requests for this. Now I like to scrapbook in an off the page sort of way, which means I don't just put it on a scrapbook uh, paper and shove it in an album. I like to do it for home decor. We're also going to be focusing on using a product from renebokays.com, so let's get started. For Renebokay product today, we're going to be using this beautiful board, laser cut chipboard, a set of three chain link frames. We're also going to be using, this is a set of two Sweetheart ATC tags, beautiful board, laser cut chipboard. Each tag comes with a little heart. We're going to be using these beautiful board words, Sweet as Honey set. We're going to be using this set of eight beautiful board laser cut chipboard pretty ivy pattern. We're going to be using these uh, butterfly kisses. They are Aurora Borealis in pink. We're going to be using lots of mini roses. These are the Whisper Pink roses. Come in a set of 24, all these roses. These are the mini soft ivory roses. Again, a set of 24 roses and leaves and these are the mini whisper pink and ivory uh, roses mulberry paper roses all of them set of 24. we're going to be using renee bouquet gaudy girl chunky glitter glass this is the diamond shade which is basically just a clear and it's nice chunky glitter glass and last but not least we're going to be using these beautiful beads they are flat back pearls in the color cotton candy so for our project today i'm going to be using these boards from dollar tree and these boards are the chunky slat boards, 12 inch chunky slat boards. And I'm gonna be using these craft wood boards also from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use four of the chunky slat boards and then six of the regular craft boards. The first thing I'll do off camera is I wanna take two of these chunky slat boards and I cut about an inch off of them because I want to build a frame here and I want my frame to be about a 12 by 12 size. And then once both of those are cut, I'm adding wood glue onto both of those shorter boards. Get one side done and of course then the other side done. And then of course, I will just put these into a nice little 12 by 12 frame size here. Lock them together. Those two shorter boards will kind of center between the two longer boards. And then once I've got those into position, I'm gonna take a couple of clamps here from the side, get those clamped up. And then while those are clamping, we can go ahead and work on the top portion. Perfect, got that into place. Now I'm just coming down and I've kind of marked where I need my boards to be and I'm adding wood glue on my framing here and then I'm gonna come in and put those slat boards together. I'll do the top and the bottom first and I'm adding the glue to the framing so that I don't have wood glue on the back of that slat board in the middle, of course. We want that to look all nice and neat from the back side. And then I'm just gonna place these other four boards into position. I'm just gonna kind of eye it uh, for the spacing, normally I sit and measure 10 times, but I'm just going to eye it this time and then add a little bit of wood glue on each side of each board and then put that into position. So this is where, of course, my off the page comes into view because I'm going to do my scrapbook uh, ensemble on this board they have these at Walmart that you can buy, but I'm like, I have all the wood for it. I'm just going to make it. So that's what I'm doing here. All right, and I let that set up. Here it is all finished and completed. And then I'm gonna come in with this Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth, and I'm going to paint this entire thing front and back so that it looks really, really nice, of course. I wasn't sure at first if I was just gonna paint around the edges like I'm doing here because I thought I'm gonna cover the whole front. And then I went in, I'm like, nah, but what if I decide partway through I want to just cover each individual slat board? And so in the end, that's what I ended up doing because I'm like, why did I make this whole thing if you're not gonna see kind of the spacing between the boards and stuff? So, you know, switching to a smaller paintbrush, of course, to come in between because I wanna paint in between all the boards and stuff as well so that it looks really nice from the front and the back. And then once the paint's all dry, I'll distress it off camera with my electric sander. So we'll come in here to the next part. It'll all look nice and distressed and complete and ready to go. And I've already cut strips of paper for this just so, you know, to save a little time here. I cut them a little bit short so that you see that wood perimeter all the way around. And these are some other papers I'm going to be using here on the project. And I'll also bring in some ephemera, like little, you know, tags and cards and things, you know, vellum pieces, papers you can cut out. This is a little die cut here. Um, this is a cute little postcard with a little tag 
um, vellum. This came with some flowers on it. I purchased Prima Marketing flowers. So I'm going to start sewing my paper. And I had a viewer want to know my and see my sewing machine. This is it. It's an El Cheapy Brother sewing machine LS2350. I know they don't have this particular model anymore, but online it's around $80 from Walmart. So find the one that's a brother around $80. <laughs> I'm going to be using this Fabri-Tac, Beacon Fabri-Tac glue for my project. And this is the photo I'm going to be using today, which is my niece, just a beautiful full pregnancy photo. I'm going to add a little bit of Fabri-Tac glue here to hold my photo in place. I've cut paper to frame around it just like that. Fabri-Tac glue is acid free so it's not going to harm our photos you know 100 years from now and discolor it or anything like that and what I do when I sew photos I wanted to show this little tip. My sewing foot um, kind of drags on the photos a little bit and it might do it on everybody. I'm going to bring it down here. What I do is place a little strip of paper there and you can see it kind of under that left side of that sewing foot there. So as I sew that left side is gliding along on the paper and not on the photo and I do that because otherwise um, which has happened before and I'm okay with it if I was doing something kind of rustic or something like that. But otherwise, um, if I don't have this little piece of paper under the foot, when I bring it up, you'll just see this tiny little almost like score line around the photo uh, next to the sewing. So um, if I want it to look really beautiful and elegant as in today's project, I make sure I put a little piece of paper there. I'm not sewing on the paper. You can see how I'm moving it along as I sew. And I just do it on the photo because that photo is glossy and it kind of like you have to push it through because it kind of sticks as well. So you can see the sewing and how it looks all the way around. It just gives it a real beautiful touch to it. And then I'm going to come in with my papers because this is one of those papers I cut for the uh, slat boards. Uh, I'm going to come in and sew all the rest of my papers as well. The thread I'm using, you're not going to see it really well on all of the papers. That's okay. It's just a real subtle texture. As soon as this is done here, I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll do the rest off camera. One more little side. Perfect. And this is what it looks like. See, just a real subtle, subtle texture, but it does add some beautiful beauty to it. Now I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades, and not on all my papers, just on some of them. Um, I'm taking those scissor blades, and I'm scraping it along the edges of my papers. And sometimes I will do it really heavy-handed, so you really, really get a um, heavy textured look. But this time I'm just kind of going across it just very lightly so that you, it doesn't add too much of a rustic look to it. And I'll show you that here in just a moment as well, what it looks like on the paper. It just adds a little more texture. You can see here what it looks like. A lot of times it's really heavy handed looking. And then we're gonna start gluing our papers and stuff on. We're gonna start gluing our strips on here. I tried to slow this video down a little bit more so that you can see all the process because it is a mixed media project, as I said earlier. So we're going to be lot adding lots of different elements to this and making it really fun. Here I'm just kind of marking once my strips are glued on, marking my next sheet of paper and where this little ephemera tag is going to lay um, so that I know where I want it. And I'm going to glue onto the board first so that I don't add glue on the tag and then it shows through the back side of that opening. There we go. And then when I add the other glue, because of where I marked it, I can just add glue onto each slat. I just want the back side to look all nice and finished. Here we go. Add this next one on. And then I'm kind of just laying things. You'll see me laying things into position, um, not always necessarily glued. So and picking up things to see where I need them to lay that kind of thing. So I'm just gluing this cute little happy tag to this Renee Bouquet ATC tag. And I've got this little metal frame for my supplies. You find all these different things in scrapbooking uh, sections at like Hobby Lobby or Joann's or Michael's. And I'm just gonna frame that word happy. Perfect. And then we're going to lay this into position. That top sheet's not yet glued. As you can see, I kind of use it to move back and forth here. Now that frame and that little uh, postcard element at the top are very thick. So I'm adding some cardboard to the back of my sheet of paper here. And I'm just marking where those, these two things are laying here because I need to cut that out, right? We need to make room for those. Let's go ahead and cut that out. This is how we, when we go to layer lots of things, we make everything lay nice and level all the way across when we're adding different elements and stuff. 
laid that in there, cut a little too much off there, so I'll put this piece right back in. There we go, the other piece I cut up from the top. And then we'll go ahead and start gluing this down onto our board here. Glue this into position, and now our paper will lay nice and level over the top of that frame and stuff. Before I lay that paper down, I want to add some vellum in here. And you're wondering, how do I know where I want everything? Because I can't just scrapbook on the fly. I have to lay everything out, and then I take photos of it so I know where I want things to lay. I'll take an hour, you know, half hour, hour, maybe a little longer, placing things into position I want them, and then I take photos of them. So I'm working off my iPad that's to the left that you can't see right now. Once I got a few things into position, I'll go ahead and now glue that top sheet on. Moving that postcard a little bit. This is a resin frame. It's by Prima Marketing. If you look up Prima Marketing resin frames, you can find these uh, online. I know that Hobby Lobby sells off-brand uh, resin frames. So I'm just kind of laying this in here because this is going to kind of be the backdrop where my photo is going to be. And it's a really thick frame. So I've got about three or four layers of cardboard here I've already glued together. And I'm just going to glue those into position so that my photo will lay level right over the top. I want that photo to stand out. So by putting that frame behind it, it kind of helps draw your attention to it. And then also using this Rene Bouquet chain link frame, we're gonna glue that on. And I know I'm gluing on the front of that photo, but that will get covered up. That will also help draw your eye to the photo. I'm gonna go ahead for now and just place cardboard on the back of that. I don't wanna glue anything down yet. I wanted this vellum piece um, kind of, I had to take some cardboard off because I didn't want it to lay on top of those cardboard sections I already have in there. So then I'm laying a piece of cardboard back over the top. I wanted it sandwiched in those cardboard. And then laying down some more ephemera pieces. Got to lift up the frame. I have just enough working time. It almost dried on me to get that sheet of paper in there. And then laying in my little die cut here. Perfect. And you can see I'm using pinks and kind of... Uh, kind of oft, soft white cream ivory shades, um, tan shades, because it's for a baby girl. Now I've got some of that uh, Dixie Belle chalk paint here. I've mixed it with water, and I'm dunking my fan brush into it, tapping off the excess, and then I will tap that fan brush to add just real slight splatters all over my paper. And you see I have some things covered up because I don't want everything with splatters on it. So I've covered up some of the portions with some paper. Now that that's done, I'm going to lay my photo into position here. And we're going to start working um, in the upper left corner. I'm using some flowers from my own supply. And then also, of course, Renee Bouquet flowers and some of the beautiful board laser cut chipboard. Here comes that, you know, pretty ivy pattern. I want to bring that in as well. Layering uh, all my pieces here. I love to tuck things inside my flowers and things like that. And these beautiful ivy pieces are so pretty and they just look so feminine. And then when you tuck them in flowers, it just kind of draws your eye to it. I just think it adds such a, a beautiful element to it. Adding in some Renee Bouquet flowers here. So what we've got is our main photo area in the center. And then by going up to the upper left, all right, I'm going to place some items there. And then we're going to kind of go down to the lower right of the photo and place items there. And if you were to draw a line from the upper left to the photo down to the lower right and then back up to the other left, you kind of have a triangular vision of where all your items are. And that's supposedly, because I did a lot of research when I was scrapbooking and stuff, uh, very nice and pleasing to the eye to kind of have that triangular line of vision. And then the photo in the center is like our focal point. So I've got these, they're brads, they're little flowers with uh, prongs on them. You might know them as fasteners. And so I cut the little fasteners off and then I'm gluing those down. Again, these are little scrapbooking pieces all from my supply. I've got little wood hearts I'm gluing on bringing in some of those uh, flat back Rene Bouquet uh, pearls, gluing in there, pinks, and I think I just used pinks. So I was thinking I was gonna use some ivory, but, and then I'm adding in the Aurora Borealis butterflies here. Looks real pretty. We're not done with that section yet. We'll come back to it. Now we're gonna go ahead and glue our focal point into position so that we can start coming down to the lower right of that and then gluing our uh, flowers and things down here. And again, I'm going to kind of match the top, how I'm placing flowers and um, uh, little pearls, flat back pearls and the beautiful ivy. 
the pretty ivy, Rene Bouquet flowers here, just kind of gluing things down into position. I love to layer. Here comes that pretty ivy pattern. So that way it kind of matches the top, right? We've got a little pretty ivy kind of going upward at the upper left, and we have a little pretty ivy coming downward at the lower right. And we're just going to let that peek out a little bit. So we're going to put some flowers in and around that. And I know like that die cut gets covered up a little bit, but that's okay. It's just there for the texture and to give us a little something more behind the scenes. Just filling in our areas here. Adding more of the um, flowers, of course. Renee Bouquet flowers. I know I take my leaves off my flowers. I don't like them sticking out. I don't like the color green they use on the back of paper flowers, so I always pull those off. And again, using the same kind of elements down here as I did up at the top so that it all fits nicely. Adding in some of those little uh, flowers again. Adding in the little wood hearts. You can use any kind of elements you want. It's just whatever you feel tells your story. I usually try to pick elements that kind of tell the story I'm trying to tell, of course. And the little flat back pearls that kept falling out of my hands so <laughs> with my nails. So using tweezers to place those into position. And a little glue on the back kind of off camera. It's down below. You can't see it. And then placing with my tweezers, adding our other little Aurora Borealis butterfly. And then I have some little stickers here with sayings on them. And I'm adding them to some really thin, thin cardboard, almost like cereal box cardboard, just to have give them a little bit of sturdiness. And I glue them on. I don't uh, trust the sticker 20 years from now to still be stuck. So I glue them on and then I will cut them out as you see here. Yeah, every element I pick kind of tells my story, like postcard, you know, that uh, element to the right, you know, you write a little something, it's kind of my postcard, This is, I'm telling my story here, adding all the flowers because the beauty of the pregnancy, that kind of thing, and, you know, pink because, you know, it's a, a sweet little girl. Perfect, and then I'm adding this sweet, remember it was sweet as honey, set beautiful words from Renee Bouquet I'm just using the sweet. Now I've got all these little sequins and gems here. These tiny little gems. I'm going to be adding in the Renee Bouquet glitter glass here. We're going to add in all these elements and these are art stones, mini art stones, Prima marketing brand, and they've got sequins mixed in. I'm going to use 3D matte gel here. It's transparent. It's like a really thick, thick adhesive. You could use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, but just make sure whatever you use is going to dry clear but I like this because I can brush it on a little bit better so sometimes I pull out this 3d matte gel so I can add it into places I want here I brush it on and I'm going to start out with the uh, Rene Bouquet glitter glass and we're just going to sprinkle it on in the areas I want once I get everything into position off camera I just turn over my whole piece and I tap the back and let all the excess that did not adhere to the glue just fall off Okay, now I'm dipping my brush in that adhesive into the little gems and I'm brushing those on this way versus trying to paint the adhesive on and pour the gems on. And then I'm coming in with the larger gems. Uh, they're just clear, flat back, little fake gems, you know, paint brushing on the little adhesive and then just with the tweezers laying those into position. They even drop with my tweezers. <laughs> they're tiny little things. I just wanted all this really cute kind of elegance and pretty coming off of the flowers. Then I'll paint the flowers and stuff here and I'll drop on those um, art stones. Gives it a nice texture. It looks so pretty when you see it up close and everything is, you know, the gel is set. It's all dry, clear. Um, off camera, I think I go in and actually place little sequins around where I want them. It takes a little bit of time, but it's so worth it in the end. Using the tweezers and adding a little bit of glue and placing each little sequin exactly where I want it, but that's how my brain operates. We're going to do the same thing here on the upper left, adding in the Rene Bouquet glitter glass, and we're bringing in these little diamond gems here, fake diamond gems, of course. And I kind of bring them down below the flowers, as you can see, so it looks like a nice little trail because that pretty ivory trails upward, right? So I want some of the gems and beads and all that to kind of trail downward so it makes it all look cohesive to the eye. 
I hope you're enjoying this project. I know, like I said earlier, a lot of you requesting to see me do a little bit of scrapbooking, so I brought it in this time. I know it's a little bit different from what we've been doing with all our farmhouse decor and that kind of thing, but I wanted you to see the process of this. So once all this gets put on here and everything is done, that makes this project complete. So I hope you like this little mixed media off the page scrapbooking side route that we took today. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know if you like how this project turned out. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you wandered in here for the first time, you're checking things out. This is a little bit of a side route. I normally do farmhouse, you know, rustic primitive decor. You might want to check those videos out. But if you like what you saw here today, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Down below in my description box, I will have all the links to everything Renee Bouquets, including the product we use on this project today. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. I want you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, allow all the activities of your day ahead or the activities you just finished fade away and focus on Jesus for just a moment. Let his crimson blood flow from the cross, pour over you and heal your wounds. Let his light shine in your darkest places so that you may rise up in all that he has for you. Let his strength be all you need to sustain every part of you. Let your heart be filled with his restoring grace and let your lungs be filled with his breath of life. Let his mercy carry you to the highest of heights and walk you through the lowest of lows. Let your eyes see all that he has for you. Focus on the race that he set before you. Let his passion lead you to the finish line. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Allow your mind to be ever set on his all-consuming fire of love, and may his goodness follow you all the days of your life. I pray this for each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.